Jose Young's here with Fanside MMA and SI MMA, standing next to Miguel Torres, who's my cameraman today. We're here in Glendale, Arizona, uh, in the media room, uh, following UFC on Fox 29 at the Gila, Re Gila River Arena. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yeah. The prelim fights were really heavy with Arizona local fighters. The crowd was really behind it. Took a long time for the arena to fill. I know you were backstage for most of it, uh, editing video, but from the prelim fighters that won, did any of them stand out in terms of uh, how they were backstage uh, interacting with the media? I know you were, ba you were backstage, so you never really got to go out and see the fights, but you got to really see how the fighters were reacting following their performances. Yeah, uh, I think most of them are pretty excited. John Morago came back here. He was, uh, you know, pretty quiet, but uh, started filming the uh, all of the media, media on his own uh, social. Uh, I think there was two fighters who did that. Um, for the most part, I think uh, Michelle Watterson, again, pretty humble, kind of uh, coming back here. Uh, Israel, who didn't seem too excited about his win. Uh, I think he almost, he kind of forgot that it was a win. Right. Um, you know, uh, and I think uh, it goes to show some of these guys are pretty, you know, pretty tough on themselves. They're the their toughest critics, yeah. uh, and I think from there, uh, you know, we even got to see uh, Gaethje who had lost, uh, and he again, kind of unexpectedly, didn't seem too bummed out. Um, came back here, ate a chocolate chip cookie, and. Uh, you know, uh, gave us a little uh, behind the scenes of what was going on in his in his head, and um, I think uh, I think the fighters, as as far as how they went today, I think they were all pretty proud of themselves. Um, but the overall feel was like they're looking to get better. Yeah, and let's talk about Israel for a second. I'm not even trying to try pronounce uh, Israel Adesanya. I learned how to say it correctly. Um, when we went to the weigh-ins, uh, you after watching the the countdowns and, and like the pre sh the pre-fight roll, you said that you got really excited for Israel versus Marvin Vittori just from the 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 pre the the pre-roll yeah. and I don't want to say it didn't deliver because Israel won uh, he like you said he was his harshest critic he was he was shooting for he wanted the finish he got the split decision win which everyone in media row was surprised he was really surprised uh, Marvin was pretty much the only one that wasn't was that was upset that he didn't win because ever I thought it was clear uh, we got to see a little bit of grappling from Israel and for those who don't know Israel is a uh, multiple time kickboxing and Muay Thai champion and he's and uh, supposedly the next John Jones, but don't tell him that he gets kind of offended when you say that uh, real uh, Odd performance from him uh, after coming off a spectacular knockout But like you said he was his harshest critic and I think the part that I took from the most from his 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 Post fight interview is right now. He's sulking he's gonna sulk for a few days But he says in five years from now he's gonna love this performance because this is where he's gonna grow You also touched on Michelle Watterson. I thought I had Courtney Casey winning 2-1 but it was one of those fights that I had no issue with who I had no issue with what the scorecard said. It was so close. I don't know if you got to watch it. Uh, I'd love to get who you thought won from the TV. I, I definitely had Courtney uh, Casey. Um, it seemed like maybe the judges were giving her points for uh, defending the submission. I mean, it was definitely grueling. I can't, you know, I can't deny uh, Watterson uh, put up a tough fight and that she uh, got out of a lot of close calls there um but uh from my point of view yeah it was casey uh but again i, I think you could have made a definite case for watterson um i think there were uh maybe other fights that were similar in the card where you weren't sure which way it should have gone but um for the most part i think especially with watterson again she i think she again saw that it wasn't a definitive win or it wasn't a clear win it was that she definitely won uh tonight but it wasn't it was um kind of up in the air and she wants more of a straight out you know uh un, undisputed win Und yeah, she wants a decisive win instead yeah, of a win that exactly. that uh yeah. it w d doesn't want a, a win that people can debate like did she deserve the win uh let's go to the co-main event which i think to me was the biggest surprise of the night i thought carlos condit was going to beat cowboy Oliveira. cowboy Oliveira was stepping on short notice uh, carl uh, carlos Condit's original opponent matt brown pulled out with an injured knee um first round was all carlos condit almost got a submission i believe it was like almost like plus like 400 that he or like my plus 400 carlos winning by submission um yeah. but he almost got the rear naked choking cowboy survived and then locked on a guillotine in the second round 
he says Carlos Condit fell asleep. And then he, when he changed his grip, woke up and tapped. Everyone in the media row thought he was out. Uh, Cowboy Oliveira's corner was screaming at the referee that he was out. Pretty much everyone in the arena thought Carlos Condit was unconscious, except for the ref. Right. Carlos Condit woke up and submitted. That's four losses in a row now for Carlos Condit. I don't know where he goes from here. There's a few, I'd love to see him rematch Robbie Lawler, maybe Mike Perry, maybe uh, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, but what did you think of Cowboy Oliveira's uh, Performance, given I believe he was the biggest underdog on the in, on the main card. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't pick him for a win. Uh, it it was uh, it was definitely uh, shocking in a way, but it, totally exciting. I mean, uh, seeing him struggle in that first round and then coming back around and 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 uh, I think it was right when he he, he cut Condit on, on the head and uh, it just got yeah. really slippery in there really quickly, and he was able to like free up get get uh out from under him and turn that uh that uh ground fight um over on him uh yeah that was totally exciting and like you were saying from where i was sitting from where we were watching uh back in the media room totally looked like he went out but it was you couldn't really tell uh his hands were moving a little bit you weren't sure if he was still uh fighting in there so i, I totally get kind of the referee not being sure but uh, definitely exciting, yeah. And we'll wrap this up real quick. We're going to try to keep it short. But uh, Justin Poirier knocked out Justin Gaethje, the, Justin Gaethje's second loss. He had, I believe, won his first 17 uh, professional fights. You've seen him fight at World Series of Fighting. Yep. Uh, you've seen him watch fights at World Series of Fighting. Uh, Arizona guy, safe to say, very pro Justin Gaethje crowd coming in. But he gets finished. Uh, one of the more exciting fights. I believe that's three straight fights of Justin Gaethje you could argue is the fight of the year. Real quick, uh, what did you think of both fighters' performances? And uh, were you, uh, obviously you were impressed with Dustin, but were you impressed with how Justin handled it, like you said? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, I mean, the whole, I mean, I had Gaethje to win, honestly, coming in. I, I thought uh, him going uh, straight uh, at Dustin, and, and, and it, it just looked like Dustin was wearing out in the first round, um, and, and Gagey's head was doing what Gagey's head does, is taking blows and kind of staying up. Uh, very surprising that he got past that point with Gagey, and uh, that he, you know, gave him a good one and kind of put him uh, put him on the defense and, and totally, um, you know, got him out. Uh, I think uh, as far as Gagey goes, he has a lot of heart. I think he uh, showed that, you know, maybe this isn't the right approach next time. Um, going in full swinging, not going in for uh, kind of closing up the, the gap when you're taking blows that hard and that fast. Um, but actually really impressed with both guys. I think the fans here at the end were really actually impressed with both of them. And, yeah. and, and they gave it up to Gaethje and Poirier. Yeah, the crowd gave both fighters a standing ovation. Dustin Poirier actually had to get helped out of the octagon after eating those leg kicks and had to sit down for his post-fight scrum. Uh, but we'll end with this. Dustin Poirier actually called out Habib. He got stabbed in the eye twice in that fight, got his legs kicked out from under him, is in back, like back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back wars and still wants Habib. That's a fight I would love to see. I don't know if he can win. Habib is the best fighter in the world. Uh, I asked Gaethje at the scrum. He said, if Dustin can't keep uh, Habib off, can't keep Habib off, he's not going to win. I think that's a no-brainer. Dustin says he wants the fight. Uh, he gave an emotional answer. You can check it out on the Facebook page. Uh, and he says he has very underrated wrestling and jiu-jitsu he wants to put on display. I'd love, I'd love to see that fight. I know you'd love to see that fight, but we got to wrap up here. We're going to kick down the media room soon. So for I'm Jose, that's Miguel. Uh, see you next time. This has been UFC on Fox 29 at the Gila River uh, Arena in Glendale, Arizona.